Welcome back. We're jumping back into Free Code Camp and we'll continue where we left off. In the first exercise, we are creating a required field. So a required field is something that a user has to fill out in order to submit the form. And to create a required field, you simply add the required attribute to the input field. Yeah, they have a example for us to look at, input type text, and there we see we add a required attribute to the field. And the challenge is to turn this input field into a required field. So it's pretty easy. We just have to find the input field that we want to make required and add the required attribute to that field. And in this case, we want to there is only one input field and it has the placeholder of cat photo URL, so we can find that here. And then we just need to add the required attribute. It, it doesn't really matter where you put this required attribute. It can go at the beginning or at the end. Let's just put it right in the middle just for fun. Required. Now if I try to submit this form, there we go. We can see a little message has popped up saying that this field is required. And that's something built into the browser. And different browsers will use slightly different different messaging to show you that that field is required. But I can't submit this until I have entered a value. So if I enter something now and then I submit, you can see it goes through. So let's see if I've done that correctly. Yep, all good. Here they're asking us to create a set of radio buttons. So a radio button is an area on a form where you are asked a question and given a few options and you can only select one of them. For instance, it might ask you if you are employed, yes or no, and you can only you can only um, choose one of these options. And here is an example where they're showing how to create one of these fields. So we can see here that there is a input tag being used again. And this time the type is not text, but radio. So that will turn this into a radio button. We make this input field a child of a label. And that is, a, that is how we provide a label for the radio button. And because radio buttons essentially work in a group, you normally have multiple options and you have to select one of them. And these options all fit in with a group. And you specify that group by giving the radio button a name. So this is what creates a group. So every radio button on this form that has this name will, will form a group and, you, and the user will only be able to select one of these options. You also need to make sure that you set the for attribute of the label. And you can see the reason for that is that this allows assistive technologies to create a link relationship between the label and the child input element. And here's the example again. And for the challenge, we need to add a pair of radio buttons to the form, each nested in its own label element. One should have the option of indoor and the other should have the option of outdoor. Both should share the name attribute of indoor and outdoor. Again, that's, that's what we use to group these together. Okay, so let's do that quickly. Let's put this above the button and after the text field. Here we go. Just make some space there for this. And what I want is, first of all, a label. And I'll just add the closing tag. And then inside of this label is where I want the radio button. It's an, which is just an input tag. And the type is radio. So we can see there's a radio button that's already appeared. We also need to give this a name, which will be used to group it. And they want it to be indoor, outdoor. Like that. And then 
what we need to do is actually give this some texture. It's, it's a good idea to leave a little space there. And well, this little trap will be for the indoor. There you go, that looks a bit better. And in, in order for the assistive technologies to work correctly, we need to add a for attribute to the label and link it to the input field through the ID attribute. So to do that, we say for and then indoor here. And then here we give this the ID which should match the value that I've put in there, which is just going to be indoor. There we go. Yep, so it's wrapping onto new lines here, but that, that doesn't really matter. And there's a little space to give it a little space before the radio button. And once I've selected it, I can't unselect it because there's only the one option here. So I need to create a second option. And before I do that, I'll just use a, a line break element just to push the submit button to a new line. And I can do that by saying BR. This creates a, a break. So we can see there that the button jumped, the button got pushed down to the new line. And I can use this line break element above the radio button as well. There you go. So now after the input box, we can see we have our first radio button there. You can you would typically position elements like this using CSS, but because we haven't really dug that much into CSS, I'm using some basic HTML elements to position elements on the form. We need another one of these for the outdoor option. So I'll do it the do it like this. Of course, if we were real programmers, we'd be copy pasting right about now. Label for outdoor. Let's close off the label. So we've got the label element, and then as a child of that, we want an input tag. And let's give it the ID. Of outdoor type radio and name again this is the group so it must match the one we've got here and close this off and actually give it the text of the label um, almost typed out label but there we go. So this, this is actually the contents. Well, this label has two bits of contents. It's got the radio button and then also this text. These are both children of the label. And now we have these two and you can see I can only click one of them. And this group here is what causes this behavior to work properly. So if I change this group name, to something like this. Now they are no longer in the same group, which means I can select that one. And when I select this one, they both are selected because they belong to different logical groups now. So these, the name of this input field must match the name of that in order to be in the same group. There we go. So I'm not sure if we've done this 100% right. I'm not sure where they wanted these uh, radio buttons to be, but we stuck them here. So let's see if they're happy with us. Yep, good enough. Okie dokie. So they've put their radio buttons above the input field. And I believe they also use the BR tag to to push it down. There you go. So this BR tag is used to push the input text field down after the radio button group. So now they want us to create checkboxes. The checkboxes are very similar to radio buttons, 
but with checkboxes you allow the user to select multiple options. You can create a bunch of checkboxes and you can ask the user select your favorite fruits and provide the user with a list of fruits and they can select as many as they, they want. As, as opposed to radio buttons where you only allow the user to select one of the options. But you create a checkbox in the same way as a radio button. The only difference is the type. So you can see here the type is now checkbox, not radio. And that's how we do it. We still have the label for which matches this ID and that is for assistive technologies. And let's see what the challenge is. Add to your form set three checkboxes. Each checkbox should be nested within its own label element. All three share the name of personality. Okie dokie. So, so we need three checkboxes with personality. Okie dokie. So we will just make up our own personalities. Just I'm sure it doesn't care about the exact values. And what I'll do is just put a BR here and then inside of here is where I will create these checkboxes. So create a label for and let's use their example loving close that off close the label off Just get the indentation to be in line. And now we can create the actual checkbox. So we say this is an input tag. The ID must match the four of the label, which is loving. The type is now checkbox. And the name I believe they want us to use personality. There you go. And this is a self-closing tag. And now again, I actually need the, but we can see the checkbox there, but there's no label yet. And I do that by giving a text child to this label tag. And I guess they, this should just be loving here. Yeah. There we see it. Now I can check it or uncheck it. And we need a few, we need two more of these. A set of three checkboxes. Yep, we need three of these. So I'll do a copy paste job on this. One, two. So this one can be caring. There you go. And this one can be giving. Yep, mustn't forget this one here, and giving. So I think I've done that right. Idea of giving, giving, uh, caring, caring, caring. There you go. And now we have these check boxes here, and I can make multiple selections. While the radio button, I can just choose one of these options. Okay, let's see if we've done this right. Yep, all good. Now this section is about using the value attribute with radio buttons and checkboxes. The big idea here is that when we do submit this form, form data gets sent to the server. When we send this data to the server, we need to let the server know which options were selected. And the way this works with HTML is that there's essentially a key being sent with a value. Basically the browser sends data to the server and lets the server know which options the user chose by using key value pairs. And the way we do that is with another attribute called the value attribute. So you can see in this example they have here is that in the radio button, we give it a value attribute. And in this case, it just happens to match the, the ID. But when a user selects this option, and then submits the form to the server, 
the server will receive data like this. It'll be, it'll use the group name, indoor, outdoor, and it'll say the value that was chosen was indoor. And of course, if the user had to select outdoor, then this would be outdoor. So we would tell the server the indoor outdoor value is indoor or outdoor, depending on the user selection. And for the checkbox, it's very similar to that. There's just a slightly different format where we can append the different options which were selected. We'll have a look at the exact payload that the browser sends in the next recap session. Okay, so give each radio and checkbox inputs a value attribute. Use the input label text in lowercase as the value of the attribute. So we need to say here, value equals indoor. And for this one, yep, that's in the input field. And for this one here, we can say value equals. It's a bit difficult to see what's happening because these fields are all almost on top of each other or all on the same line. Normally we would space these out and, and an editor will help us do that. An editor will just reformat this so it'll be a lot easier to see what's happening. But we can double check. We're in the input tag and we've given it a value of outdoor, which is what we needed. And now for the checkboxes, let's just do it after the input here, value equals, and for this one it's loving, here we go, value equals lazy, and for the last one here, it doesn't matter where these attributes go, this one is, oh, but <laughs> I said it doesn't matter where they go, but that was for the text box so it mattered there but it the order doesn't matter as long as you're in the right in the right tag so value equals energetic there you go that should be fine and in the next recap session we will actually see what data is being sent through here but for now let's see if we've done this correctly Yep, nice, done. So I think that's enough for one session, and we will do the recap in the next session. I hope you can join me for that one. Cheers for now.